What's up traders, it's Andrew O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is October 27th, 2021. Please go ahead, do me the biggest favor of all time and click the like button on this video, subscribe to my channel, especially if you're enjoying this content. Today, we are going to talk about the price action in the indices and we're gonna talk about the nasty reversal in the markets. Let's jump right into it. Before we do that, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and your own risk parameters. Last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account into any one of my trades. I actually put my contacts in for this video because I was tired of just having that like ridiculous glare as soon as I look into the, into the camera. All right, box scores for today, S&P 500. Finishing down 0.44%. We had the NASDAQ QQQ finishing up 0.23%, which was held up by literally about five stocks. It was insane what was going on. A few names really put the team on their back today. Then we had the IWM small caps getting sparked down 1.84%, our biggest loser for the day. And then we had the Dow Jones trading down 0.7%. Volatility moved higher in all of these indices, and we had horrible breath, negative across the board. So my big question to you is, were you selling into the strength yesterday and the day before? You know, market literally going crazy. So I took that opportunity to sell into the market strength. All right, we did have a pension rebalance, and this is me like, I'm just a huge investments nerd. I'm always looking for some sort of edge on the market. And I'm always sharing that with pristine capital members. This Twitter account at Wall Street Jesus, most of what you're seeing on Twitter, again, is complete noise. Half of it is BS, 80% of it's BS. But every once in a while, you come across something that is very meaningful and it makes it all the worthwhile. So this, his tweet was just talking about pension fund month and rebalancing and how it could be significant in terms of equities for sale versus bonds to buy and really the reason why is because a lot of these pension funds you know they have certain asset allocation weights they have to maintain so it might be like okay for this strategy we have 80 percent stock 20 percent bond well hey if your stocks are ripping to the upside and your bonds are moving to the downside then you have to rebalance the way you do that is by selling some of your stocks and buying some of your bonds so I talked about this at length in our Pristine Capital pre-market webinar. Definitely reach out to me if you're interested in joining the community and you love investing, you love trading, you're really into it and you want to take your game to the next level, reach out to me for sure. But yeah, we talked about how, you know, we have this month on rebalancing. We've had such a ripper of the past few days. Like this is not a time to be aggressive. And I came into this session with the mindset of, you know, we might have three days of selling. And in the grand scheme of things, am I able to lay off the gas for three days? Three days is nothing. It's basically like you get an excuse to take a vacation in the market. Think about that. What other job can you take a vacation and actually get paid for it? Or take a vacation and actually benefit yourselves. Like, it's insane. Take a vacation and be a better performer. Absolutely crazy. It's what you have to do. It's what most people are not willing to do. Finviz heat map, we had just a few stocks really holding the market up. We had Microsoft, Google, and Tesla putting the weight of the whole market, the S&P 500, on their back. And it was pretty obvious to me as I was uh, just navigating the session very early on in the morning, hey, the breadth is just horrible. And the volatility was popping. Small caps were very weak. It gave every indication that something really suspect was going on. Let's take a look at the S&P 500. And right now it is 602, so we can see where the futures opened up. They're opening up positive. Let me actually close this out. I'm getting like a million pings. Okay. S&P 500 right now trading up slightly in the after hours. Let me close this one out too. Sorry about that ridiculous okay there it is so trading up slightly after hours today's candle or let's talk about yesterday's candle we reached our r1 pivot level 
of 45.84 on the S&P 500. You know, that's a great level to hit. You know, look how far we came in the past two weeks. And what's kind of funny is, you know, yesterday I appeared on a Twitter Spaces. And so a couple weeks ago, when we were literally, I'm not even joking with you, when we're literally trading down here, pretty much everyone in the group is like, you know, I'm super bearish on the market right now. Like I'm either shorting or I'm completely flat. Like it's not safe, you know, to be in the markets. I was basically the only one saying, hey, I have some longs that I took. Like I took some leaps, you know, I have some positions or whatever. You know, I feel comfortable here. I'm seeing a lot of indications that the market move higher. Yesterday's Twitter space, everyone was very bullish. You know, like we had a guy, this guy, it was freaking crazy. This guy said, I don't think the market is gonna correct by 5% until March of 2022. It's just not gonna happen. And I heard that and I was like, bruh, like that to me was like, geez, I need to sell, you know, even more tomorrow. Like I'm so glad I took some profits today. So to hear things like that, it just immediately raises my red flag. Like, geez, like this is just not good. Like the froth is on another level. But overall, this is just a pullback to the five day EMA. It's nothing. So the market is still like, for all intents and purposes, this is still a very bullish trend. Like this is just a pullback to that five day EMA. If the market was pulling back and you felt like the world was ending today, that means you're not managing your risk properly. And it means you just have way too much on. Uh, one really interesting note here is this red line was the prior all time high in the S&P 500. And we actually closed just slightly below that for today's session. So watch now there will be a narrative of like, oh my gosh, we we failed to make a new high. Like it was a failed breakout. Like so that could really happen. Let's take a look at our weekly value break over here. I did take a short position in the spy today, and this was really my target. You know this. Uh, this weekly value very high. I'd mentioned this a couple times. Hey, we're so extended away from it. You know, it'd be very logical if we got some sort of little pullback in the market, a little whoopsie. You know, maybe we hit that level. That's pretty much where we got to today. Let's take a look at our NASDAQ. NASDAQ was, this was the strongest of the indices today. And again, it was held up, held up by those few names. And yeah, really, really strong action today, or not really strong actually. This is, you know, just the best of the best of the group. But you can see we failed again to make it above this monthly point of control. So this is back in this sequence over here, the recurring theme. And this is huge. The recurring theme was every time we would get to a key level. We would struggle at the level and then by the close it would be like oh we just closed right at the level or just right below it like for instance right here s p 500 like oh we just couldn't make it above the 20 day and then what do you know another leg down in the market here it's like mm, closed right at the 20 day and here we kind of failed below it and it's like what do you know another leg lower in the market with the nasdaq I gotta say, it's beginning to look a little bit like that. Where it's like, you know, we did tag this monthly value where you're high, but for whatever reason, we just failed below the point of control. It's like, oh yeah, even though Microsoft and Google were ripping to the upside today, you know, we just couldn't get it done either. So for me, this is kind of like, we're getting some cautionary flags. Keep in mind, the 20 day moving average is all the way down here. That's the same with all of these indices. So the risk is more elevated now than it was when we were you know, trading right by the 20 day moving average. Let's look at the Russell. This one really got annihilated today. Yeah, we're trading up a little bit in the after hours. We'll have to see if it sticks. So Russell pulled back to the 20 day moving average. And again, pullbacks to the 20 day, they're normal, they happen. But this was essentially like a two day bloodbath. And the Russell, I did stop out of a few of my Russell positions just for prudent risk management. You know, we plunged below this five day EMA, 10 day EMA, monthly value where you high, all in the same session. So for me, it's like, I just have to respect that. And I know that this could very well be, you know, the perfect bottom in the Russell small caps. 
If it is, I'll get right back in them, no problem. Dow Jones, this one also, you know, fell below the five-day EMA, but still overall in a bullish trend. But look at this, we bearish engulfed, you know, one, two, three, basically like four candles. So it's definitely no joke. And if we have more pensioned, uh, pension month end selling, you know, we could certainly head a bit lower. One thing that I will note, we have positive VANA flows that are occurring right now in the market. So into the close, I knew very well that the odds of an overnight gap when you have these positive VANA flows are pretty high. So right now you can see the, the Dow Jones having a little gap, you know, whatever. What's most important though is not where you gap up to, it's where you close. Because once you get into a weaker market, you, remember you open up on the highs and you close on the lows. In a really strong market, you do the opposite. You open up on the lows and you close on the highs. So super important to just keep that in mind. Okay, let's move on. We'll take a quick look at our sectors and style factors. Sectors. So we had, yeah, complete bloodbath on all these sectors. Look at this. So breath was just horrible. <laughs> Um, blockchain assets, you know, we're down big. The big standout was solar energy. And yesterday I did add a position in N phase, which was the biggest winner in the market today. Boom, up 24.65%. It did sell off a bit into the close, but overall this is very nice action for N phase. It's a power earnings gap setup. I added this one in the after hours yesterday for about 192 bucks. And it closed the day at 216. So right now I have a you know a small position. It's nothing crazy. It's a one-star position for me. And now on this power earnings gap setup, I'm actually gonna be looking to potentially average up into it. Be a really nice move for this stock. So those are our sectors. Let's take a look at our style factors. Style factors. We had a min ball momentum down. Really, all of these just taking a bloodbath. High beta was down 1.45%. Cyclicals, which is small cap value, down 2%. So now these small caps, they're definitely very oversold uh, for sure. But yeah, it's important. Like, if something's just getting beaten relentlessly, you have to take note of that and you want to make sure you're managing your risk. Okay, let's dive into some of my treats for today. I did not do that much today. Let's see. So what did I do here? So this was my one position that I added. This was MQ. I added a little starter position here. It said stock moving on high relative volume this morning, quite extended, which is why I went small here. Would like an opportunity to add to this position at a lower price. And MQ did end up retracing. But I do think this stock could end up being a really nice market leader. But yeah, definitely not an inspiring close. High volume, this breakout really got stuffed. So I have a very small you know, starter feeler position. I left it on the books, really just like a placeholder. You know, it'll keep me watching the stock and when this one sets up again, you know, I'll just add to my position. Let's take a look at my options trading. So my options trading, I did take a couple stops but I'm really proud of the way that I traded today. So Tesla, I took a November 5th, 1000 by 990 put spread for $2 and 73 cents. I just put here, the stock could have a gamma hangover when the October 29th options expire. There's so much dealer gamma that's related to the 1029 options. And this was one where you know, everyone on Spaces yesterday was so bold up over Tesla. I was like, oh my gosh, like this thing, you know, it's amazing. It has been amazing, but is Tesla just going to rip to like, you know, it's at a $2 trillion valuation. Like, no, I think uh, there was a lot of speculators jamming this thing up. The reason why I took a flyer on it is, yeah, there's going to be a lot of options that roll off on October 29th. So I'm looking to see if this one gets a little gamma hangover. So yeah, added to a short. Um, and then I closed out of some of my IWM positions. This one at 235, this was really like the one stop that I took. 
So I closed out of my IWM November 19th, 228 calls for 280. I had paid 434. And I just wrote here, poor process on this trade, managing risk in case month end gets uglier before it gets better. And I closed this out at 235. We ended up closing, you know, considerably lower than where I closed out this position. So that to me is like, you know, win when you just step out of the way. I did add this position on yesterday. And this was definitely no poor process here. So take a look. IWM, I added yesterday, I wanna say like right around here. Basically at a point where it was like, okay, we're selling off, you know, the market's very strong. We're pulling back to the five day EMA. I'll add this position. Maybe we get a Vana rally overnight. I can close it out, you know, no big deal. But today we just had high conviction selling all throughout the day. See, I stopped out of that. I said, hey, you know, luckily I wasn't in a bunch of risk from yesterday. This was the one position I added. No problem. I'll take that hit. Boom. Hit out of it. Stop out of it and move on. And to me, that was like, so getting into the trade was, you know, process error, I would say. But in terms of the decision to get out, that one, I'm like, all right, I'm, you know, pretty proud of my performance there because it's very easy, like making a decision like, oh, we're in an up tape and I'm going to buy a stock. You know, that's very easy to do. But when you make a mistake and then it's like, OK, let's correct the one error I made. You know, that's really what's going to separate you as a trader. Like, it's not about like, can you make money when the market's going up? No, it's really about just like your risk management and how much of the money you're keeping. So over the past couple of days, I was basically just harvesting profits. You know, for me, it's like this was the one little thing I got dinged on, you know, no big deal. Let's take a look here. Okay, so I closed that one out. I also had another IWM runner on. I closed out the remaining 50% of this call for 725. I'd paid 795 again, you know, no big deal. And then I did take some spy puts into the close. So I have my on uh, November 19th, 455 puts that I added. And this is just in case, hey, maybe we get some more, you know, pension rebalancing, pension selling tomorrow. So yeah, overall, I feel very comfortable with how I'm positioned now. You know, if the market wants to keep rallying higher, that's great. If the market wants to get uglier, you know, that's great as well. There's gonna be some great opportunities within that context. All right, let's real quick, we'll take a look at our big tech options races. X for my strategy, like I'm a trend follower. I understand every time, you know, the market sells off, I'm always gonna get dinged on that. You know, I'm always gonna take a drawdown whenever the market changes direction, but it's all about just, are you like recklessly long with like a million positions when it turns or, you know, have you been taking profits along the way? So in terms of some of these that are standing out, so we have this BKKT, which I traded the other day Hit a really nice winner here. Uh, BKKT, I think it had an advance today. It just shows you like the, I think this is a really good company actually. But it just kind of shows you like the speculation is still, <laughs> is still out there. Um, really nice advance for this BKKT. Morgan Stanley really caught my eye. So Morgan Stanley was down 1.55%. But we had a lot of options activity here. So let's actually take a look at some of these uh, different things and how the order flow is looking. So we'll go to our Tradescape. BKKT, look at all this call flow coming in mostly for November and December. Four strike calls, seven and a half, 10 strike, 12 and a half strike. Yeah, so it looks like a lot of players are positioning in this, the 40 strike. Yeah, I, ended up, I sold this, I think, yesterday for like 43 bucks. See a lot of positioning at BKKT. Then we had, you know, Upstart, everyone getting bold to the max in Upstart. Even though Upstart, like this, you know, is that a good look? No, not at all. So yeah, Upstart, a lot of these market leaders are really starting to fall apart. It's like Cloudflare, you know, currently short this one as well. Uh, Cloudflare, so now I have a few shorts on the books. Cloudflare, this doesn't really look the best either. This is like a, you know, like hanging man candle or whatever it's even called. This is like the worst 
don't know, I think this is a shooting star. Yeah, where you have this big move up, you end up closing on the lows. Not a good look. And we're still so extended from the 20 day moving average and we're still trading at 105 times sales. Let's take a look at what else we have. Yeah, Morgan Stanley, wow. This by far is the one that really sticks out to me. So Morgan Stanley, January of 2022, more January 2022, more January 2022, 70 strike, 50 strike. Yeah, all of Jan 2022, November, Jan 2023. Ooh, going out deep. Yeah, all in January 2022. So it's not like they're, you know, let's gamma squeeze it. It's October 27th. Let's buy the October 29th calls. This seems more like some positioning into Morgan Stanley. So I'll definitely be watching this one tomorrow for sure. And that's the beauty of like, when you're controlling your risk, like if the market falls again tomorrow, I'm not gonna be like, oh my God. Like, you know, I'm not gonna be like crying in my soup. And I can actually look at it as like, you know, where are the opportunities? So yeah, Morgan Stanley, I will definitely be watching. That about does it for this market recap video. Hope you all had an awesome trading session today. I will see you all tomorrow.